15, 2015. For those in the audience that haven't had the pleasure of attending one of our meetings before, just to explain how they work. After we're done with roll call and approval of the minutes, we'll go over each item one at a time. City staff will present on an item. Then initial response comes through technical questions made by the plan commission members. Once we're done with that, we open it up to public commentary. If you have something to say about an agenda item, we ask that you please step up to the microphone and state your name and address so we have it for the minutes. And please keep your comments as uh, close to the subject matter as possible. Thank you. After that, after we're done with public commentary, we will close that, bring it back to the commission for discussion, and then a vote. And then we just move on to the next item. With that, let's call the roll. David Borisak. Present. Ed Bowen. Jeffrey Tomes. Here. Here. John Hens. Here. Steve Cummings. Here. Kathleen Pop. Here. Gary Gray. Here. Donna Laurie. Robert Weigert. Carl Nolenberger. In attendance. All right, then let's move on to approval of the minutes from August 4th. Do we have any additions, corrections, or deletions from those minutes? Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion clearly passes. Let us move on to item number one. Grant private utility easement at 200 North Campbell Road, City of Oshkosh Senior Center. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Um, this is a request to grant a utility easement at the uh, Oshkosh Senior Center. Um, so basically, I'm sorry it's washed out, as it tends to do when it's sprayed out. But this is Campbell Road. You see the Senior Center located here, the Senior Center South. Uh, there's also the one to the north. Um, this is Fox Valley Technical College, uh, UWO's uh, facility over here. Um, so what this request is currently there's a, um, a power line that runs in between the two parking lots uh, down to a transformer here to the south or east side of the building um, that services the senior center. WPS is looking to service Fox Valley Tech off of this transformer and in order to do that they require a private utility easement to run along that same line where the facilities are currently in place. So it would be a six foot wide um, utility easement that would run along the property, kick back to the south or east side of the building, southeast side I guess, uh, of the building. WPS then could tap off of this service to connect to the to the tech. Uh, but it would have to, can't be tapped off of a uh, private service, it would have to be off of a public service. So that easement would provide that public, um, public service. And so um, when reviewing it, the Department of Public Works had identified the easement location um, as proposed and as actually already in the ground um, does uh, cross over a couple sanitary sewer easements and so they are recommending that this easement be subordinate to those two sanitary sewer easements as well as any other easements on site or associated with the vacated right-of-way which you can see in this area used to be right-of-way here um, so there's uh, easements associated with the vacation of the right-of-way so this is just a plan showing the actual property and the uh, legal for the easement itself. And staff is recommending approval of granting of the private utility easement to WPS uh, as presented with one condition that the final easement document shall include wording that the proposed easement will be subordinate to all easements from vacated right of way or other existing easements. All right, technical questions. I guess I have one. Is there a precedent for the condition here? Um, common thing or not a common thing? It would be common if it's crossing other easements, just to kind of set the hierarchy. Okay. Other technical questions? <coughs> Seeing none, is there anyone here from the audience to speak to this item? Seeing none, back to the commission. Move approval. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Okay, call the roll. Bob. Graham. Aye. Nolenberger. Aye. Orsak? Aye. Holmes? Aye. Vince? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Ortec? Aye. Motion carried 8 0. Okay, item number two architectural building plan review for a public restroom and park shelter facility located within South Park at 1300 Georgia Street. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. um, on the, on the map, I have South Park, which is a community park on the south side. It's a little over 26 acres. Um, it includes walking paths, trails. Uh, there's four shelters, some playground equipment, basketball and tennis courts, splash pad, uh, some fishing ponds or streams, and the Wednesday's Farmer's Market is hosted at South Park um, every week. 
so this is the facility. This is the entire park property itself. You can see it's bordered by uh, West South Park on the south, uh, Georgia, West 11th, and Ohio Street. I'm going to um, zoom in a little bit onto the actual area where the uh, shelter is being proposed. It's at this location. Um, as you've seen several of these before, you've seen them in Stevens Park and Menominee Park at, uh, on the Riverwalk. Um, what you're reviewing here is the location and the building design only for this shelter. Um, that is regulated by state statute. Uh, so uh, in uh, 2014, South Park Master Plan was adopted. Um, and that master plan did include improvements to South Park, including a restroom facility um, at this location. It's kind of hard to see. Um, there is a bunch of trees in this location, but there is an existing restroom facility uh, and a storage shed right there right now. Um, so I'm going to kind of move forward. This is, a, uh, this is a site plan showing the South Park itself and showing the proposed location of the new restroom facility with optional outdoor uh, picnic area. This is going to replace an old restroom with a new restroom um, and possibly have some additional um, covered outdoor area. Um, you can call that a picnic area or a gathering area or uh, whatnot. Um, so this is a close-up of that location itself. You can see the gray area is the building itself. Um, this area directly around it is the where the roof extends out over the outside edges of the building and this area to the north is the optional um, uh, expanded outdoor area. So the building itself is about 40 feet by 24 feet, um, but the covered area is about 51 by 40. And I'm going to zoom to a, this layout. This is the actual uh, restroom itself um, with the family changing area for the splash pad for users of the splash pad and I guess for any small kids. Um, so the outline right now for the building is here. Uh, this would be a potential add, which would be extending the roof out. Um, and making an open an open air area. So altogether, it's about 3,000 square feet. You would add about 1,000 square feet if they included the, the optional outdoor area. The design of this facility is very <coughs> similar to those in Menominee Park, Stevens Park, and on the Boatwork site. And you can see here from the elevations. Now this dashed line right here shows what's going to be going up immediately, and this would be the extension. Um, so the building itself is going to be clad in a six inch fiberboard or fiber cement siding and you can see there's a three foot stone uh, base uh, knee wall I guess you would call it around the outside of the building. Uh, there's no blank walls, there's pillars on all sides. Um, on the two end pieces in the north and south there's added uh, treatment to break up the expansive wall. Uh, here you have the uh, drinking fountains. Um, so this is the structure itself. Um, it did go to the Parks Board, Parks Advisory Board on August 10th for approval of the design. Uh, it did receive approval. Um, it is located in the 2015 CIP, not the one you're looking at now, uh, for construction. So um, that's it. So really what you're looking at is, the again, the design of the structure itself and the location on site. Um, staff is recommending approval of the building plan uh, for the restroom facility and the alternative park shelter addition uh, as proposed. Great. Technical questions. Jeff. I'm confused. Are we approving the shelter with the alternative? Yes. To, together as one piece, right? Correct. Okay, got it. Yep. The, yes. oh, the sorry. outside area may come at it. The shelter will be built, or the restroom will be built first, and the outside area will probably come after. It won't be built at the same time. But they wouldn't have to come back here. They then. wouldn't have to come back here. Okay, got it. Gary. Yes, uh, since the park director is here, I got a couple of questions for him. Could we do, do you want to do that now or during public? Uh, oh, as long as you're here, go ahead. I don't think uh, I have got a couple of questions. Are, um, it, it looks like the building materials is, is a little bit different than in the past. Is this something just special for this building or is it just a, 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 a change in opinion on construction of these type of buildings in the future? No, actually the uh, the building materials are similar to the ones that we recently came forward to the plan commission oh. at Stevens okay. Park. The All big right. change as uh, Mr. Buck noted is we're looking at natural or field stone which is going to mimic <coughs> some of the um, existing bollard, the light bollards that are out there. We tried to uh, have stone that will match that but otherwise the building materials are very similar to Stevens Park, Menominee Park as well as Boatworks. Okay, second question is um, are, are there any other locations in South Park that 
have sitting facilities like the Edison would have. Do we have other restroom facilities there? No, no, no. no. Uh, uh, sitting, uh, uh, sit, sitting areas like the Edison would have. Okay, we do have. Um, there's what we call shelter number one, which is which will be um, south, um, all the way down. Or this one? On the parking lot. No, nope, you had the first one, David. That's shelter one. That's primarily an indoor shelter, um, but there are picnic tables that users can pull outside and have around the perimeter of the building. And then between shelter one and the existing restroom, um, David, if you can, once you get it closed. <clears throat> Sorry about that technical glitch. All right, hopefully that's fixed. Then the smaller building just to the south of the restroom facility that's going to be constructed, there's a small building right there. That's what we call shelter two. That's mainly an indoor shelter that has about six picnic tables indoors. And then further over by Ohio and um, South Park, there's a shelter. That one is, um, it's utilized but not as heavily. Again, it's a primarily an indoor shelter, picnic tables, but okay. people do congregate outdoors. Okay, my, 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 my concern is that if this was only one, it would be swamped with people trying to use it. Uh, the last question I have is more of a general question. Uh, has the Park Department or the Advisory Board ever considered ha having concessions at, so at these type of locations? Um, the only one, the ones we do have concessions at are our main facilities such as Pollock Park, Manu uh, the amusement rides at Menominee Park, the zoo. Um, this one is primarily a rentable facility, so we, we really haven't considered concessions. It's pretty tough for us to um, make a decent profit on concessions because of staffing and, and product cost and so forth. And I just don't see the, um, um, you know, the heavy usage here that would uh, justify having um, the concessions. We do allow okay. local mobile food vendors to set up adjacent and in the park based on the, uh, the mobile vending ordinance. It, yeah, it, it's just a, uh, well, it's a, uh, Substantial uh, revenue in in Chicago, Illinois. And I was just mentioning it. Okay, thank you. Yep, sure. Jeff, um, the alternative park shelter is that in the the 2015 CIP that portion of? It's not. Um, we feel that at this point, the budget that we were allotted in 2015 will cover the construction of the restroom facility only. Um, we do have um, a small grassroots fundraiser that's going on um, where we're trying to raise the funds for the shelter. So it's potential that we have the fundraiser um, completed where we could add on the shelter, but it's, um, it's all depending on that raising of the funds. Okay, thank you. Any other technical questions? Okay, thank you very much. Anyone here from the public to speak to this item today? Once, going twice. Okay, back to the commission. Move approval. Second. Kathy. I'm glad to see the stone added to it. Um, I Evidently, uh, state statutes say that the plan commission can have an architectural building review, and of course it's too late because it's already been developed. But I think it'll, the stone will help enormously. Great, thank you, John. Yeah, I just I just want to add on to that too because I was just out there this summer for, in that shelter too for a graduation party, and everybody was talking about how poor the bathrooms are there. <laughs> so it's great to see that they're getting improved upon. Great, thank you. Other commentary? Okay, let's call the roll. Hi. <clears throat> Ray. Hi. Nolenberger? Aye. Weissach? Aye. Tomes? Aye. Hens? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Whitech? Aye. Motion carried 8 0. All right, let's move on to item number three development plan review and preliminary plat for the creation of a 15 lot single family residential subdivision at the southeast corner of Riff Road and Edgewood Road. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so you're probably all familiar with the area. You have Riff Road um, on the north side of the city, almost to the northern boundaries of the city. In this section, Edgewood Road runs north and south. The subject property is a 4.04 acre piece um, right at the corner of Riff and Edgewood. Um, zoning for the area is all, on the south side, is all R1 plan development. So you have a plan development request and then a preliminary subdivision plat. Um, to the north, you have undeveloped property um, owned by the school district was the former potential former site for a elementary school um, but right now it is just vacant you have a community church here to the uh, directly to the east 
and single family residential, uh, not fully developed to the south and to the west across Edgewood. So as I had mentioned, this is a, a single family area. This is the last infill lot, um, so to speak, or infill piece of a larger subdivision known as North Shore Preserve. Um, and I'm gonna kinda, this is an aerial shot kind of showing, you can see some of it developed. This is from uh, 2011. Um, I'll go forward again, zoom in of the lot so you can see the detention basins as part of that previous uh, final plat. Um, and this is the area that we're discussing right now. Um, so this was an original preliminary plat from 1998. Um, so you can see what I have squared off here is the section that we're going to be talking about today. Um, this came through as a plan development uh, and a preliminary plat in 98. And it basically had about 83, 84 lots throughout this entire subdivision area. And so you can see at this time it was platted for a road to come straight through to connect to Riff Road and there would be 12 uh, single family lots developed in this, in this area, four on Edgewood and eight on the um, unnamed road. Then in 2001, the first final plat came through and it was uh, for about 54, well it's actually 56 lots to our detention basins. Um, for the first section of this of this overall subdivision. And you can see this is the piece we're gonna be talking about today. Uh, and then in 2004, sort of the bottom end piece was platted. Um, and I believe there, there was, it might've been 17 lots that went in that second section. Um, so this is again, the last piece, the third, third piece, so to speak. Um, and this is what's being proposed. It's coming through a plan development review because it's changing from the original approval and I'll get into that uh, for the plan development. And also the preliminary plat is coming through again because it's changing from the original approved preliminary plat. Uh, so what's being proposed uh, now is 15 lots, single family lots and dedicated roadway as a cul-de-sac. It's called White Clover Court on this plat. Um, so this is again changing from the original 12 lots um, and the through road. Um, the petitioner has indicated in their application that the smaller lots are more desirable in the current market climate and current market perspective. And so subsequently they reduce the lot sizes uh, in this request. However, they still have not, um, it is not drastically reduced. Um, with a total uh, proposed dwelling units of 15 on a little over four acres, um, our comprehensive plan would consider this density to be very low. It's about 3.7 units per acre. And to put that in comparison, a single family residential district or R1 district in the city um, would allow 24 units on four acres, which would be six units per acre. Um, so again, it's very low, but about 3.7. If it would have come in as the, the 12 lots, it would have been about 3.3 units per acre. So you have a little bit variation there. Um, the road itself, um, again, is no longer going to be a through road. It's coming in as a cul-de-sac, a little over 400 feet long cul-de-sac, which meets our subdivision regulation standards. Um, the name on here is shown as white clover. That is going to have to be reviewed by uh, emergency services to make sure there's no conflict with any other roads in the county. Um, but five lots are being proposed here on Edgewood, um, and then another 10 lots on this uh, new cul-de-sac road that would connect <coughs> into, I believe that's Preserve, Shore Preserve Drive um, on the south side. Um, the road would cul-de-sac rather than going through. Um, staff had looked at that and we reviewed the original plan development, the original plat, and uh, did not really see a through street there to be desirable and we're unsure why it was approved at that time going through. There's only about 250, 270 feet in between uh, this section, um, which would create a very strange uh, close intersection connection. Um, it's very short cul-de-sac with very few lots on it. Uh, and so staff did not see any issue and actually prefers the cul-de-sac over the through street. Um, the one thing that did come up is potential pedestrian connection uh, for these lots through so you wouldn't have to go to Edgewood especially when Riff Road is developed in the future to possibly have walks or trails or whatever on them. Um, so we are recommending, we did recommend to the developer that a easement be put in place for a trail um, and also for a water line. And you can see it's shown on here as a 30 foot water uh, and trail easement in between lots 10 and 11. And uh, uh, city police and fire departments have reviewed the plan. They don't have any problems relative to servicing the proposed uh, subdivision. 
Um, talk a little bit about the water system. Um, it is looped with this new um, roadway, so it would be looping around, uh, which is a desirable uh, uh, water utility or water facility. Sanitary sewer is currently lo located uh, in Shore Preserve, and it would be extended up into um, White Clover Court um, to service these lots, uh, 8 through 15. However, lots 1 through 5 are fronting Edgewood. There is currently no sanitary service um, in Edgewood. There's capacity, but there's no actual facility in Edgewood itself. Uh, so the installation of sanitary sewer um, could be included in the 2017 capital improvement uh, program or capital improvement plan, or alternatively, the facilities could be installed by the developer as part of their development agreement, and then they would have access through that. Um, Stormwater, as I had mentioned before, there is two existing ponds, and you can actually see them on this section of the plat. Um, they were designed to take, and the other ones in the subdivision itself, were designed to take the capacity at full build out at that preliminary plat. Um, so they would be utilizing the existing stormwater facilities um, that are already in place, so you don't see any there. Um, one of the things that you see when some divisions come through, especially preliminaries, is parkland dedication. Uh, staff looked at this uh, very small four acre area. I didn't see any direct area in here that would be suitable for a park, um, and we are recommending that the fee in lieu of park dedication uh, take place for the subdivision. That money goes into a pot to acquire parkland in a more uh, comprehensive fashion. Um, the other thing that wasn't included with the preliminary plat was a site, or excuse me, a street lighting plan uh, or a terrace tree plan. Those were two new things that were added. I guess they're not new anymore, but about 2006, requiring those to come in with the preliminary plats. Um, so we are going to be requesting that those come in prior to final plat approval as a condition. Um, let me see if I have, okay. So uh, as proposed, there is no uh, base standard modifications being requested as part of the plan development. It's really going through the plan development phase uh, because it was zoned that way to begin with. Um, the single family uses are obviously consistent with our comp plan, which recommends residential. All lots within, all 15 lots meet our R our one zoning code standards as far as dimensions, street frontage. Um, um, so um, the one thing we are recommending uh, is that the approval of the development plan be provided and requiring no further plan development review for individual building plans that come through as long as they meet the R1 standards in our underlying code. Um, that's something you'll typically see with, I mean, there's no buildings proposed at this time, um, so it would follow that R1. Uh, zoning designation. Um, so with that, we are recommending approval of both the plan development and the 15 lot um, land division preliminary plat with four conditions, that the right of way receives the name approval from EMS uh, providers, uh, fee in lieu of parkland dedication is utilized, the street lighting and terrace trees plan is submitted and approved by the city prior to final plat submission, and approval of the development plan is provided requiring no further review or approval of building plans by the plan commission. Excellent. Technical questions, David and then Jeff. Um, on the proposed uh, White Clover Court, uh, paving in all utilities are part of the developer's agreement? Correct. But that's not true for one through five? Um, Edgewood is already there. They could put it as part of the developer's agreement to uh, install those utilities um, or whatever they need, the sanitary, um, and then that would come up to them. Otherwise, they would have to wait till the city could put it in their CIP and those lots wouldn't be developable until that time. I, I hear it, but it, it seems that that these should be either prorated 100 percent to the to the lots or part of the part of the agreement. It's well, the, it, it seems inconsistent. Yeah, the details of the developer's agreement are, are usually taken care of after the preliminary plat is is brought through before the final is accepted. So we're going to see this again? You'll see a final, final plan. And I, I would think that to address one through five <coughs> would, would, would be appropriate and, and consistent with okay. the development of this. Jeff? I don't quite understand why uh, on, on the park dedication, you know, since this was originally the, the, the road was supposed to go straight on through and only have 12 lots, now we're saying it's got 15 
and we're we're actually having an easement between those two triangle lots up the, the top of the cul-de-sac why wasn't that that whole those triangle at the end of the cul-de-sac looked as potential park which then would have the connection through the you know the walkway to 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 the to the trail well and Ray can probably address that as well but those are very small lots that would be a very very small park area difficult to maintain being on the outskirts of the city um, and if so small that there would hardly be any facilities for it it would also cut those lots down in size to be very tiny um, probably undevelopable um, the city has utilized especially for small subdivision plats like this uh, the fee and lieu um, and then we use our outdoor rec well, plan I to acquire usually larger community oriented get that, but, the, but this is part of a lot a much bigger development correct that yeah has and no, that has no park area at right all. as the other as the other developments came through um, there were trails that were and I don't know if you can see them here on the overall but there were a lot of open spaces and trails that came through as uh, had to be privately maintained but as open spaces and I believe there may have been some fee and loo in this one as well all right then um, I'm assuming that then that based off the the water retention that the existing ponds can handle the additional three homes that that are being proposed correct that oh. would all come out too during full analysis with the developers agreement Gary yeah um, am I correct in assuming that the uh, actual buildings will be sa same as what previously approved as opposed to being reduced because the small lots well the previous approval didn't address building size so it only addressed the lot sizes that same condition that we were recommending that the building plans don't have to come <coughs> through prior um, we'll come back through for plan commission approval was put on each one of these plats as they came through in the original plan development so so so, so in other words the developer can de build anything they want um, well th there's usually private covenants that go the developer can develop private covenants that are between the landowner and the sale of the lot um, but they would have to follow the city's design standards uh, for residential development at our minimum uh, our minimum building sizes including our minimum setbacks and all the other stuff that's in our regular oh, cool, code one, yeah. right okay other technical questions okay seeing none anyone here from the public to speak to this item today if you'd like to step up to the microphone state your name and address we would love to hear from you hi hi um, I'm Luann Zabel Z-I-E-B-E-L-L LL, sorry. Uh, my address is 3880 Shorebird Court in Oshkosh. And I just speak for a few of the residents in our area that uh, we think these lots are just a little too small. They're, they just seem a little smaller than the lots that are already in the other phases that are there. And we feel like the smaller the lot, the smaller the homes, and it may possibly take away from the value of our homes. Um, what, if I can ask, what is the minimum um, size of the home for Oshkosh? In the R1 district, it's 800 square feet. 800, okay. Um, and I know we did have covenants associated with our different um, lots that we live in. And I don't know offhand, I believe the minimum on Shore Preserve was, do you know? 1700. 1700. So if you put a 1,700 square foot house on these lots, I, it just seems um, you know, like there's really going to be tight. You may not even be able to fit that many, that big of a house, even 1,500. So again, I'm just kind of concerned that these lots are just a little too small for what our neighborhood is like already. Thank you. Other folks here to speak to the site today? Come on up, sir. Uh, Dave Omashinsky, um, 1605 Maricopa Drive, Oshkosh. Uh, I am one of the partners in North Shore Real Estate Development, uh, and I just wanted to respond to Luann's uh, comments. We certainly appreciate um, the, the whole neighborhood and the ambiance of that neighborhood, and I've tried to take special care uh, with that. 
Um, with our uh, engineer, <clears throat> we feel very comfortable that there will be plenty of green space on an average lot of, every one of these lots will be at least 120 feet deep. And at least, I believe, seven, uh, other than the, the two cul-de-sac, uh, four cul-de-sac lots, about 78 feet wide. So a 1,600 square foot home with a triple garage will fit comfortably and leave a, a ample amount of, of green space. And I think equally important, though, we also care very much about the values in the existing plots. Um, there are 71 lots platted right now. We still have 14 for sale, and the average retail price on those is over $50,000. So we have a vested interest along with uh, the existing homeowners to make sure we develop this correctly and do not denigrate anybody's value there because it'll directly adversely affect us. So we think we've we've done our, our, our homework and, and the lot size will work well and uh, will be developed very well with the rest of the neighborhood. Thanks. Hold on, as long as you're here, question? How, how big are these lots in comparison to the existing lots that are in the, in the housing development? The, the lot size is very greatly. Uh, the first, um, the, the, in the first plat, there were 54 lots. The average size lot, let's say in the, f in the lots that are in, in the front of the subdivision, um, are about um, 11 to 12,000 square feet. These lots will average about 10, so they are a little bit smaller. Now there are some lots in there that are three quarters of an acre that were pie-shaped lots that are back towards the marsh. Uh, in, in uh, certain parts of the subdivision, but in the area that we're talking there, they're about in that uh, 10 to, or excuse me, 11 to 12,000 range. So it's anticipated that to build a 1,700 square foot house that you're not talking about a ranch, you're talking about like a two story. Well, we, you know, we haven't, we, we, we anticipate having covenants, so there'll be some minimums. We haven't decided what those will be. And, um, it, but, you know, several of the homes that have been uh, developed, there's been, uh, 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 there are in the 1,600 square foot range. The developer in our current agreement has some latitude uh, on, on waiving some of the size uh, covenants, uh, but they've, uh, we, we'd like to think they've been done very tastefully. So, uh, you know, we think houses in the 15 to 1,600 square foot range would fit very nicely. Um, and we're also finding in today's market, um, the, the market for new homes has been slightly smaller. Triple garages, everybody, almost everybody buying new wants a very large garage and wants to put more money in amenities in the home. And so while some of the homes have gotten smaller, the values of the homes have not be because the money is put more in amenities. Now that's a, that's a broad general statement, but we anticipate that's the the type of development we'd have here. We, we think the homes will be on the, on, the, on the slightly smaller size. Yes, I would have to say that. But, but the values <clears throat> would maintain similar to what's in the area. We believe so. The amenities and things of that. We, we, we believe so. Any other questions from Mr. as long as he's here? Thank you, sir. Anyone else here to speak of this item today? Once. Twice. Okay, public commentary is closed. Back to the commission. Comments, thoughts, opinions. Move for Do approval of conditions. Second. And moved and seconded. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, let's call the roll. Prop. Aye. Gray. Aye. Nolenberger. Aye. Forsak. Aye. Holmes. Aye. Aye. Cummings. Aye. Wojtek. Aye. Washington Grade 0. All right, thank you. Now we move on to public hearing 2016 Capital Improvement Program. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, this is a review and acceptance of the 2016 Capital Improvement Program, or the CIP. Um, just as a reminder, I know you see it every year. Um, the purpose of the review is for the Plan Commission to make a determination of consistency and uh, of the proposed programs and activities in the 2016 CIP with the comp plan, official maps, and other planning activities and uh, policies of the city. So annually, the uh, CIP is prepared by the Department of Public Works and approved by the Common Council. 
Uh, there is a five-year coverage from 2016 to 2020. However, um, the city only officially adopts uh, implementation of one year, which is 2016, leaves room for changes in the extended, um, extended four years. Um, so prior to consideration by the Common Council, and in this case we assume it's going to be the end of November, a review by the Plan Commission for consistency with the comp plan um, and other planning documents uh, is required. Um, so we have reviewed as staff all of the proposed projects and activities. None have been identified as being contrary to the comprehensive plan or official map or any plan developments. Um, we are going to be recommending approval or ex not approval but acceptance of the 2016 capital improvement program uh, with a finding that the listed projects are not in conflict with the comp plan. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to go over the details of any of them. You got your packets and we have representatives from uh, <coughs> transportation, traffic, parks, Department of Public Works and Community Development here to answer any questions if you have them. But it's basically broken down into a whole bunch of sections. So we have a comprehensive streets and utility improvements. And those are typically, I believe, reconstruction of streets. Uh, those include city ones and, and other ones that are in the CIP. New streets, uh, a lot of infrastructure improvements running from other streets or, or other utilities, storm water, wastewater utilities, also the sidewalk program that we have and, and new sidewalks. Um, talks about some traffic improvements, park improvements, uh, public property improvements that are not utilities, uh, public property improvements that are utilities, uh, major equipment purchases, and that's broken out into major equipment and vehicles. Um, we talk about the tax increment financing district and improvements that are going on with those, uh, and then it, the special assessments and borrowing sections. What so that's all broken down. And you can see I have mine tabbed, but each little section has a summary and then it has the details. Um, and then also what I handed out to you was this map, which is uh, great. Public Works puts this together showing all of the, uh, um, well, most of the improvements, um, if not all of them. And so you can kind of see where they are, all are in relation to themselves. And I have that map up here on the screen, but I knew it was going to be drastically washed out. So we printed those out for you. Public Works did that. Um, so you have them, um, and like I had said, I'm not going to go over any individual section or, or go over each piece. Um, I will leave it up to you to ask questions as you see fit. So we are recommending acceptance of the 2016 CIP and a finding that the projects listed are not in conflict with the comprehensive plan. All right, let's start with uh, Jeff and then Kathy and then David. So we are we to ignore the city council's directive on capital expenditure constraint? Well, as a when looking at these projects, you're looking at consistency with the comp plan, so not budgeting. Isn't what they passed part of what we would consider the comp plan, which has a financial component to no, it? No, the projects are. I mean, if the city council were to say. Um, we're going to do one project for five dollars or we're going to do a zillion projects for a million dollars or many many millions of dollars what you have to look at is the consistency of the projects with the plan not the cost um, or the uh, fiscal analysis I mean that might be for a, a different board and I suspect it might be so in other words it's another rubber stamp well if you see something in here like if you see a road going in where the comp plan doesn't recommend road or a commercial road, arterial road going in where it should be a residential area, that would be a significant it's divergence. It just seems odd to me that we're passing something that's in direct conflict with what the Common Council has adopted in terms of, and maybe that's them to decide to, to cut three fourths of these projects out, and that's fine. But the Council determines the financing, but Steve, looks like Steve. I just just have to, to jump in there because it says what we're recommending find, doing is finding that the listed projects are not in conflict with the city of Oshkosh's comprehensive plan. That's it. We're not saying everything Doesn't else. We're not endorsing. We're saying well, we're not the, finding it in conflict. But I'm looking at that part of the comp plan. There's a financial component of, component of that comp plan. Not not just streets. There's there's financial component of that comp plan. Would, would, yeah, the comp plan wouldn't get into that much detail with the finance. Steve, you have something right. to share that would. <coughs> I'm this is the weirdest. Just to jump in, I'm not sure which part of it 
is not, but it, it has been balanced out by the city manager to meet the $11.4 million capital improvement total for the general obligation of the city that it, the capital total is what you're referring to. Just wanted to clarify that. Kathy, you want to go on with your comment? Sure. Um, I think I know the answer, but other people might not. The principal street projects that were selected were really done on the basis of utilities. Sanitary sewer and water underneath the street that desperately needed, or at least in the public works line, had a priority for replacement and improvement as opposed to these are the streets that need to be done. Some of them are, and I think some of them are not. So. <coughs> you're, you're correct. The utilities are one of the factors that is considered in there. Um, I would certainly make the argument that Otter Street and Bismarck and North Main Street are not some of the better streets. I believe they're all rated a three or less on the PACER system, so they would certainly right. make no, the I ranking. I applaud you for Otter. Um, so it, it is certainly a combination. However, in order to be able to facilitate the needed utility infrastructure on some of those bad streets, we need to improve the infrastructure on some of the other streets to get the connectivity of the sanitary sewer system so that we can provide drainage at today's standards and slopes for those. We have to put other pipes in deeper first. We have to enlarge the storm sewer system up to the river in order to get the storm sewer system not to create flooding. So it is a a three-dimensional puzzle, so to speak, to put together to make sure that we have all the parts connected when we get to one of the bad streets and continue to work to get to some of those other streets in that area that are equally as bad, but we got we have to have the underground infrastructure in place to serve them before we can construct them. So Bowen Street and Mill Street would be examples of uh, streets that you need because it goes we need the infrastructure there. Um, Bowen Street has some very, very old sanitary sewer on it. The last time that we worked in this area on Bowen Street, the pipe started to turn to powder. Um, so it is utility-wise well due. Uh, Mill Street is needed for the um, a storm sewer. Uh, right, pardon me, Bowen Street is actually getting the storm sewer corridor. Um, Mill Street is getting done um, partly with the sanitary. There's some very old sanitary sewer on there. The condition of it's not bad. So it, it worked well to, we don't pick a street to go down because it's the shortest route, but if it makes sense, because pavement condition and other utilities are poor, they may not be awful, but we may target that as the route to be able to serve one of the streets that is really bad. Yeah. Thank you. David. Um, I'll, I'll tee it up by saying that I, I think that is generally in, in uh, agreement with the comprehensive plan, but I do have a couple of questions. Um, and some may be policy, some may be financial related. I noticed that there was a uh, big expenditure for little Oshkosh uh, parks, uh, but there, but one of the notes on it was refer, uh, the implication was deferred maintenance as opposed to expansion. And I'm just curious um, why there, there perhaps is that much above the line deferred maintenance. Uh, I'm just looking at the page. Page, are you on there? Uh, those, it's memory. Um, that would be page 32. First, first item on there. The issue with Little Oshkosh is um, the year of the facility, um, the materials that it was made out of. Um, essentially, when we take a look at a playground and the changing safety standards of playgrounds, we look at a 15 to 20 year replacement of an existing, um, what I'll call a modular piece of equipment in our standard parks. This is made out of wood. Um, it does not comply with a lot of the ADA issues, a lot of um, other safety issues that have taken place because of the wood product. Um, so we've been in contact with Southwest Rotary, who was the um, spearhead back when Little Oshkosh was constructed. And they are looking to help us do a major fundraiser. Um, right now, the city's looking to con contribute about $100,000 um, with the community in Southwest Ro Rotary um, match or not matching, but raising up to three hundred dollars to $400,000. So, so the, the total project is for the bottom, the, the, so the city outline is 100 Correct. All right, thank you. Um, next. Uh, there is something uh, about Quarry Park, uh, about uh, gas mitigation, or uh, and the question I have is how much and, and also land acquisition. 
my question would be, how much have we really dumped into this thing? And uh, would, would not have we been better to at least figure out if we were better off to excavate and, you know, uh, dig and dump, so to speak? We are not better off to excavate it and get rid of it. That the cost of that would be, we know that already. <laughs> At this current, current time, we are investigating the condition out there. It is actually, um, we're t referring to the area immediately south of Quarry Park, the two privately owned quarries I believe you're referring to that we're investigating right now. Was that okay? That was so they're privately, they're privately owned properties right now. There is strong evidence that the city may have dumped municipal waste there. The concern is the liability the city may have as a result of that generating methane gas. We are doing our due diligence at this point in time to determine what the risk and what is out there before we proceed. Steve, is this over and above what we've already done out there with the methane gas? This is on different parcels of land than what we have done. Those were two city-owned parcels that we were city-operated dumps. These are two private ones. And, yeah, private and, and I understand the cradle-to-grave liability. That's, that, that was, that's a great uh, answer. Um, there is something in there about uh, heating and ventilating uh, um, about a $500,000 on is that just annual? Um, Which project? It, it seemed it was a continuing project. And it's, it's something to do um, in facilities. Uh, I'm a little outside of my realm of expertise. Um, I don't know if anyone here can really, but we'll certainly give a shot at answering your question. That's uh, the facility project for each facility. Yeah, and I understand, but is that is that just? A program that that's what you feel you're, you're going to. This is just an ongoing. Um, it seemed in the in the capex, in in the major equipment. At one time there was a thought of re, of putting paying some of these lower value items out of cash flow as opposed to borrowing, um, and we're looking at things. Uh, 65, you know, let's just pick a number, roughly $60,000 and under. Yet there's a, there's more than a handful of... of I can answer that. Because uh, I'm, I'm on the Long Range Finance Committee. We, we are looking at that. We haven't come to a resolution on that yet. But we are looking at some certain things that may not be necessary to be in the CIP. We just haven't come up with how we're going to finance those yet. But it is on our agenda. On the Long Range Finance Committee to provide that to the Council for review at some point in time. I mean, it's something that's on our list to do. You know, and 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 I will tell you, this is a repetitive thing that you know right. it seems it's as a practice. It's yeah, as a that we, we we need to bring that to a resolution. I would think one way or the other. Us, we're looking at things like whether the vehicles and stuff should remain in, in in a CIP type situation or whether the CIP is really for infrastructural issues mostly and then we have something outside that Go ahead. are you not That's also looking at leasing um, an instructor at least to look at the option of leaping yeah that hasn't really come up I, I've been a proponent of, of looking at leasing because of the lower interest rates well, and, and be able to to do some of that but I mean it just we haven't gotten there yet if I don't want to interrupt I think the conversation is really good but it's really kind of outside of the scope of what you're talking about as a plan commission um, but so just to keep that in mind did you have other things yeah I have one last one and we'll get the hearing uh, and, and it's uh, we we continually spend uh, a lot of money legitimately for water infiltration um, uh, more of a policy question, but it, it's still what are we doing, if anything, about illegal hookups uh, and addressing that on a on a maybe a structural basis as opposed to a ad hoc or street reconstruction basis, if anything. We're certainly addressing them with the street reconstruction, and as they're identified through other means, televising otherwise, the current state budget took away one of our planned routes to look at implementing that they've made it illegal to tie it to a point of sale of a home that was one of the avenues we were exploring to implement so that has been taken away from us so we won't be uh, pursuing that option any longer uh, so we will have to go back and um, try to come up with another proposal Gary thank you that was it 
Uh, yes. Um, I guess I will try to answer the, uh, ask the questions for Mr. Gorty. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's a new calculation in the CIP procedure called the CIP project score. What it, page are you on? No, no, I'm talking about the CIP project uh, score, which, which, which uh, department head scores. Yes. Uh, did, did you find that useful? Uh, that was actually, each project was scored by Mr. Roloff during the review process okay. of them. Um, it did provide some interesting insights into it. Um, certainly certain projects scored much larger, just depending on the scoring system. Public infrastructure projects uh, tended to score very well, as did economic development projects. Um, conversely, um, projects that were Simp were more related to um, quality of life, tended to score lower. So the, it was really reviewed almost among the individual type of project. So, so, so the department had, had uh, incidental in, uh, impact in, in, in determining the, the score? Yes, they were, okay. they were reviewed okay. during the process, so we were okay. able to give our feedback to the manager as he was scoring them. Uh, the second question I had for Mr. Gold, I've got, but I have other, a couple other questions for Mr. Buck. Um, Here he is. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hello. Good afternoon. Um, <laughs> do, you, do you know the specific dates where the public hearing was advertised, and was this a, uh, what, what kind of class advertisement was the public hearing? Well, this is a public hearing here. And I'm not sure. I'm not sure what class it was, um, or when those went out. But I don't know the answer. No, it also goes, this also goes to the council. What you're doing is making a you're having a public hearing, making a recommendation to accept to the council. So it'll also happen okay. at that stage. Okay, based on the plan. I, I, I have w w one other quick question. Okay, I, 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 I'm sorry, Mr. Gorey, I, I, I remember the question I was going to ask you. Um, and you, you may not know the answer, but maybe you do. Uh, do you know when the five-year uh, CIP booklet is going to be available to the public? Because the last time I looked at the website, it, w it was not on the website. And I was wondering if you have any idea of when it will be on the website. I, uh, typically, it does not go on the website until after it is approved. OK. I think that's a bad mistake, but that's only my opinion. Because uh, how, 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 how can people make comments on it? Anyhow, I, I, I'm not arguing with you, Mr. Goldie. I'm just saying personal opinion. OK. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Back to David. And thank you for. Uh, raising that that question because that thought had occurred to me and that is obviously it looks like we have nobody from the public that's here may or may not have any public uh, public participation at the common council hearing uh, the difficulty of getting this inf information out to the community and I think that at least this year's or, or next year's um, proposed CIP should be on the website as soon as it's available. Um, I, I don't know, it, you know how many people look at Channel 10 would have gotten this information. Certainly um, the newspaper uh, is, is not a reliable source to get information out for public for what's happening. Uh, but I would think that uh, especially if the if the newspaper is making this well let's reconnect with the city uh, that maybe perhaps we we could get them to run a story about the comprehensive plan at least that, that the community could come to the common council meeting but I think that we have to look at um, some ways of doing a better uh, way of informing the community other than what is required by law we just have to be able to do, uh, to get that information out and uh, I may not know the best way, but uh. I would add that if there's ever a method to remove equipment from this, it would make that a lot less painful. 
because I think if you start putting out lists of stuff people are buying as part of this, I think that, that that's going to invite a lot of unproductive commentary. If we're sticking more to infrastructure and planning, I think that's where you want. That would be my suggestion if we ever get that far. Yeah. And you know, it's a we used to get a tremendous amount of, of, of public participation when people found out that their streets were going to be done. And, and, you know, a number of years ago, and I, I don't know if anybody remembers that, but we did have a lot of public participation. Other thoughts? Seeing none, and there's no one here. So do we have any? Do we want to uh, make a motion? The motion is uh, that this is in conformance Ex to it that we accept the ex plan. We have second. That's David moved it. Carl seconded. Gary. Yeah, I have a quick comment. Um, to a great extent, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit frustrated with this processing. I'm not exactly sure what needs to be done. It seems like. Uh, to some extent, I agree with what uh, Jeff said, that we're almost over standing there saying, uh, we, we had some discussion at the council, uh, at the commission meeting, I realized that, but it's, it seems like, you know, we're, we're uh, uh, receiving, uh, uh, approving whatever, $42 million, and that's a hell of a lot of money. Well, first of all, our concern is in finance, and second of all, from my standpoint, the infrastructure needs in this city are so great that I've never seen one of these <laughs> that I thought, well, this doesn't make any sense uh, because so many of these things are the the need is just so great and ongoing. But that's just me. Well, we but early on, you know, I've been on here five six years, and the first couple of years we actually used to go over this in a lot more detail, um, and we would actually go over 2017, 2018. <coughs> To a little little degree, right? In the second and third year, so you kind of knew what was coming as we go forward, and so we could say because it's not just we call it the 2016 comprehensive, I mean, uh, uh, capital study, but it is a five-year right. thing, and and we we're we're not really spending much paying much attention to years four or two for four, but we used to actually go over this a little bit more in more detail uh, than what we have these last. What two or three years? I would agree, and, and, and I don't know if if we need to, okay, because of what we're actually saying is we're not doing anything like you said outside the ordinary right. that isn't allowable in a comprehensive plan where we're approving buying stuff, you know, I mean equipment and stuff that we need. We're buying and making changes to sewers and and things of that nature. I mean that's all obviously within the comprehensive plan realm. Well, when we review it as staff, if we see something in there that looks like it doesn't match the comp plan or official map or something, it's brought up before, but if it was still in here, it would be brought up at this meeting. We would bring it out as a... As Stephen a and David? It, it is a rolling five-year plan. And, you know, right. as you, uh, you drop your year out of here and things are going to change. Things we may want to do in 2017, we may not do because of the, oh. the economy, or, economy or something else, but... By the time it gets to here and it gets to uh, the council, there's you know, been untold hours put in this whole plan, and the, and the council probably spends 40 hours at budget workshops. So this is not something we just sort of put. Mr. Chairman, we'll, we'll, we'll we just put a comment. Uh, I, 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 I think I, <laughs> along with all the commissioners, appreciate the staff people who come, who come to the meetings here to answer. David, uh, two things. One, uh, I, Jeff's observation is, 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 I think, is well t taken, and, and maybe there's a time when we could look at the out years. I mean, just the fact that that we look at it, uh, or suggest a format for reviewing this yeah. in this meeting that would be t the, the, a the little second. More. The, the second thing is because of the absence of of the public here. In some respects, we wind up playing the role of the public, at least at raising questions whether it is totally is it in, con uh, uh, in conformance. And, you know, it goes a little field, and thank you for allowing us to, to drift a little bit. And uh, I think with this plays a, a, a important role that asking questions that may never be raised. And that's what I was trying to get at. I mean, that's what I was trying to get at. You know, a couple of years ago, even if people don't look at Channel 10, 
that we were going over certain projects and discussing certain projects and then you know see and, and uh, uh, to Steve's point going out to, to the further years and kind of discussing some of those projects even though we know it may change uh, which is fine but that now we're just not talking about those kinds of things um, we just say okay here's the comp plan and yeah I mean excuse me here's the capital plan and it doesn't violate the comp plan so the public doesn't see you know, what we used to do if you had your hand and the frustration we have in the council is people seldom show up for this until they get the notice in the mail up the street yeah right that is a big issue. there's ample warning correct mr Pickley, months in advance that your street's going to be done until it hits the mailbox there's no interest yeah. steve, and i can appreciate it steve one comment on the schedule um up until a few years ago when the manager worked to get the cip earlier in the year the planning commission was seeing this much later we had already had our neighborhood public meeting by the time the plan commission was seeing that that was typically how a lot of those residents had heard about the process and were hence coming to the meeting what was happening then is as things forward after that we were dropping streets and having to notify people that well sorry for the false alarm your streets no longer in the CIP you can uh, stop you can breathe again and not worry about it um, the neighborhood CIP meeting typically happens around the end of October early November so that's when the residents will really get their first notice of the fact that their individual street is going to be coming up and that is typically four weeks or at least three weeks ahead of the council meeting when they approve it so the residents are at least well aware of it prior to council approval yeah. one thing Steve and I met with some neighbors on Bone Street early summer midsummer yes. We met with them on Bone Street. We invited them to City Hall. Steve went through all the maps and the plan. Why we're doing what we're doing. And they walked away very satisfied that there was logic to all that was being done. So, but it's, 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 you know, we're trying to get more, more visual during the council meetings showing exactly what is being done so rather than just being read the council meeting. Here are the graphics. Here's your, well, your I, neighborhood. But I think, Steve, that's, that's my point. If we did some of that, here not necessarily all but you did some of it here you so you're going to see that one time see it again when, when it comes to you so I mean there isn't I mean, there, there's multiple points that person can see that information uh, you know to David's point if, if we get the Northwestern to publish hey, here's here's some of the things that that, that are going to be done there's multiple points now if, and if people don't come then well that's their own issue uh, to address that, Jeff, we could do a larger presentation type of thing um, at the plan commission level if you want. I mean, we keep it really general right now, you know, with the intent that you look through it, and if you have I issues will, that I you bring them different. up. Right. There's a motion on the floor. I just want to remind people before we forget. Call for the question. Okay. Any discussion on that? All right. Let's call the roll. Rob? Aye. Gray? Aye. Nolenberger? Aye. Borsak? Aye. Jones? Aye. Hintz? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Poitek? Aye. Motion for And there's another item here that says Board and Commission Recruitment Public Service Announcement. Right. The uh, city is, uh, Media Services is starting the process of thinking about uh, doing some public service announcements for recruit recruitments on various boards and commissions. Um, not necessarily the chairperson, but anybody who's interested in taking part of that. I don't know how that's going to shape out or what it's going to be, um, but if somebody wants to be the spokesperson for the plan commission and talk about how the plan commission, you know, how public service is, and uh, I think really what's, what's happening is we're trying to encourage more community involvement and more involvement with boards and commissions, which... Um, you know sometimes uh, it's very difficult to fill open positions we had a meeting a couple two three weeks ago and i brought all the chairs for all the boards and commissions together to kind of talk through this whole process um, and it came down to uh, we have to better uh, we have to do a better job explaining what all these boards and commissions do what does planning do mm -hmm. so there's there's that a huge kind of void of knowledge to do that as part of this public service and also obviously recruiting more people but uh, we're going to regroup in a, you know, about another month mm -hmm. it was very very beneficial or you know frustration from chairs of other boards 
Um, it's, very, it's hard to get people to. Uh, I, I actually felt fortunate to be on this board because we have strong attendance here. Some of the other boards barely make quorum sometimes. You know, that's really never been an issue here. I'm, I'm, I'm confused, uh, <laughs> which, which is probably nothing new, but anyhow. Um, is this, this issue trying to get new people involved with committees or in, uh, commissions? Or yes. Is it to advertise what the committees do? Both. Both. But I think the thought is if you advertise, if people have a better sense of what they do, maybe they're more likely to volunteer. But the bottom line is they want more people to be available to serve on boards and commissions. And they won't go on the board if they don't know what the board or commission does. Well, and also well, just to even know that it's available, that right. there are, That's right. you can serve your community in that, in all these different ways. The, 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 there was a page on the uh, city website saying that th these, these committees all have openings. Uh, uh, a lot of people, we're trying to reach the people that don't, aren't inclined to look at the city website. I mean, it's really more of an outreach. And what the group does. That's yeah. crucial. We've got to go out and get these people. They're not necessarily coming. Yeah, we have many yeah. boards and commissions that are that are short people right now with no applications for people to serve on them. Yeah. Just one simple, easy piece of marketing advice. State of the city is a great place to, to have a presentation about the commissions. I would agree. Because it's usually pretty good at tennis. Oh, oh, and, it's, and it's viewed on TV, and it's covered by news media, and it's one of those things where if it's stressed, then they're going to come in and say, oh, really? This is, and then maybe you'll get whoever, I can't remember who the, you know, it's not right. Jeff Bullier anymore, but maybe, you know, you get some coverage there then, too. Anything else on that topic there, sir? Nope. So if, if uh, somebody's willing to volunteer, you will be interested in doing it, you don't have to talk about it now, but shoot right. Darren or myself an email and we will uh, get your information to Media Services and she will, Emily uh, Mikowski will coordinate. All right. Carl. <laughs> Move we adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Jeff, I think we'll stop. <laughs> <laughs>